Hello, it's me, it's Jack here at bakewithjack.co.uk bringing your weekly bread making tip every single Thursday. And I feel so strongly to share this with you today uh, that I've had to do it now. It's not even daytime, it's night time. I've got the lights on, that's why it's a little bit ropey in here. My hair's a little bit of a mess, but here goes, right? I tell people this in every single one of my classes and if you're a home baker and you get inconsistent results or it doesn't quite work and you give up or something goes wrong somewhere down the line, it can be down to this. It can be down to temperature, right? And the reason I feel so strongly about this is because most bread making books say things like measure out so many milliliters of lukewarm water or tepid water or body heat water or warm water or hand hot water and nobody knows what these words means, only the person who wrote it down in the book. And maybe they don't even know because I don't even know and I'm not here to decipher this stuff because I don't even know, not even I know this stuff. However, what I will tell you is Temperature is so important. If your yeast is making bubbles inside of your dough making it rise, um, you need to keep it happy. And if it's really, really warm, it makes bubbles really, really fast. And if it's really, really cold, it makes bubbles really, really slowly. It still makes bubbles, but it makes it really, really slowly. So this is why it's quite important to know what the temperature is of everything. Because if you're using hand hot, body heat, tepid water, whatever it is, you don't know what that is. and you don't know what to expect out of your dough. Okay, so I use room temperature water when I make bread. Room temperature, and I've been going to people's houses now for three and a half years, baking bread with them in their kitchens, and it's normally between 18 and 23 degrees. Somewhere between there, sometimes 17, sometimes 16, and that's okay, but the point is, I have this to tell me what temperature the room is, and I have this tell me what temperature the water is, and I make the water room temperature, which means match the two numbers together. If the room is 20, use 20 water. If the room's 18, use 18 water. The point is, your dough is gonna spend a lot of time in that room. It's gonna prove up, it's gonna rest. You're gonna leave it there for a couple of hours, minimum, before it goes into the oven, right? And over all that time, it's gonna level out there or thereabouts and become, um, the temperature of the room, right? As long as you leave it in the room, which I'll speak about in another video, when it's proven, leave it at room temperature. If everything is room temperature, and you're leaving it at room temperature, all the way until it goes into the oven, the rest of the stuff surrounding it is easy peasy. Problems come if you've got a warm dough in a cool place, or a cool dough in a warm place. This is where you get some issues, and you read stuff in books like, oil some cling film and put it on top to stop it from sticking, or, wet some paper, wet some cloth and put it on the top and put your dough in the air and cover and stuff like this and it's all crackers, all you need to do is match these two numbers, prove it out on the side in the kitchen and everything will be fine. You're gonna sidestep a lot of potential issues that come from making a warm dough. Seriously, trust me, make it a room temperature. Leave it at room temperature. As long as your room's like between 18 and 23, even 17 and 16, it's gonna be cool, it's gonna be fine. Don't worry too much about it. Nobody talks about this stuff and I don't know why. I don't understand why nobody talks about temperature. It might make the beginning a little bit more complicated, not by much, but it makes the whole process down the line much more simpler. The less that you do, the better the bread's gonna be. Thank you so much for joining me every single Thursday for my weekly bread making tip. There is so much to talk about and if you've got a question as well, ask me, that's what I'm here for, okay? You can tweet me, you can Instagram me, you can Facebook me, you can leave a comment here. Ask me a question and I'll get round to it in time. Um, please click like if you liked it and if you wanna subscribe, you won't miss a single thing, okay? I will see you next week, I look forward to it. One more thing before I go, I remembered a story from a lady, okay? I visited a lady in her house and she'd been trying to make bread for a long time and it's been 
consistently inconsistent. Even though she had an oven with a proving program and a baking program, you just gotta make the dough and put it in and it takes care of the rest for you, okay? Even though that was the case, and it came with a book of specific recipes specifically for the oven to take all the work out, to make a ciabatta or a baguette or a bloomer or anything you wanted in the world, it will produce as long as you follow the instructions, put it in the oven, let it prove it on its own, let it bake it on its own. However, the results were always inconsistent and always uh, not good enough. And the first thing I asked when I arrived, the first thing I asked was what temperature is it when it goes in? Because the oven doesn't know what temperature it is. The oven does this for this amount of time, this for this amount of time, whatever it does, bakes it, whatever, I don't know. But it doesn't know what temperature it goes in at. So if it doesn't know what temperature goes in at, how does it know how long to prove it for? And at what temperature to prove it for? It just doesn't know. And that's why that, in theory, that nice oven and the nice book that comes with it is faultless. It's completely faultless. However, it neglected to tell you what temperature you need it to be when it goes in. And so the whole thing is irrelevant and useless and pointless. It makes sense. Check your temperatures. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you next week uh, for another answer to another question. And uh, I'm gonna start putting more recipes on next year. I feel like I need to do more recipes. So I'm gonna get my head together and put that together for next year. I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, I'll see you next week for another tip.